Today we are going to be installing some vinyl plank snap together flooring in my daughter's bedroom. The first thing that we need to do is remove all of the carpeting and the padding below. I realized that the easiest way to do this was to take an X-Acto blade or a box cutter and just cut in long strips so that I can roll them up and remove them. Much easier to work in small pieces. Okay, so I have all the carpeting out and the padding. The next thing that we're gonna do is my voice is echoing in here, <laughs> it's all so empty. We are gonna remove all of the tack strippings from the carpet, as well as any staples along the way that were there to hold down the padding. There's a few staples right here. We're gonna get these all out. And I just got this three piece pry bar set. I'll link it in the description down below. Um, different sizes, uh, different abilities to get in under there without messing up your baseboards. Because I did leave my baseboards intact, knowing that there's gonna be a small gap uh, for where we put in the flooring. I will have to touch up my baseboards though. You can tell that I've painted them gray. Um, so we're gonna get started on this. Let's get a part started. It's easiest to just kind of slide along and pry it up a little bit like that. Get this foam out of the way, padding. And just kind of go along like this. Fry them up. So you get all these pieces like this. They're not fun to deal with or to try to get rid of. Um, so then you're gonna have nails that were used and you can either use your hammer or the pry bar has these exact same tool spots that are really helpful for getting them up. As well as the, this smaller one will actually work really well for the staples. And just pull those staples right out like that. So you wanna make sure that you have some sort of a pile so that you're not stepping on any of these, either the tools or the pieces that you are removing. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going along and get the entire room done. So we have gotten our carpet out, we have the pad out, we have gone around and done the tack strips, all the nails, any staples, we have thoroughly vacuumed and swept. We are ready to start putting in this floor. So we chose, it's called Procore, um, it is waterproof, and we are really excited to get this floor in here and um, make this room look so much nicer. So the way that these go together, so they're not adhesive. These are the snap in place. They have, it's like almost like a rubber feeling backing. Um, and these are going to slide into place. So you start on either the top side or the left side, depending on how you're doing it. And you just slide them into place. When the seams line up perfectly, then you can lay it back down. And I just lifted it up at a teeny tiny little angle in order to get the, the grooves to slide together. And then when it lays flat, it is a perfect seamless, I cannot get a finger in there. I can barely even see that it's there. So that's how you're gonna do that. So um, I'm, what you wanna do is start with your very first row, go the whole way down the room, and then you're gonna come back and add another layer, another row. Um, so it's really important that around the perimeter of your room, you leave a fourth inch gap around all the different sides because this is a floating floor and it uh, needs to be able to move a little bit with the house or with the change of temperatures, change of seasons. Um, so that's really important. You also should use a mallet if you have any type of places where you need to tap into place. Unfortunately, I know I own two mallets and I can't find them anywhere, so I have my hammer. Um, another tip is to take a block of wood, preferably not one with a screw poking out the end, but you know, the other side. Um, because that way, if you start, uh, if you put this up against your flooring and then you tap a little with the hammer or the mallet on this side, it's going to distribute a little bit more evenly instead of just tapping. You don't want to um, use your mallet or a hammer or anything anywhere near these ridges because if they break, then your system is failing. It's not gonna go together right and that piece might be useless. 
So I'm just gonna go and put a row and you can watch my progress and see how it's going. Okay, so earlier when I was saying that it is waterproof, I also wanted to mention that it is also kid and dog proof, which is really cool, pet proof, any kind of animals. It's scratch resistant. It's really, really a great flooring if you have children or pets or anything that might scratch it or dent it or anything of that nature. So now that we've got down to the end here, you see that I have to make a cut. So I'm gonna mark that and cut it and slide it into place and then I will start my second row. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna put on some safety goggles. Okay, that's awesome. We've got a nice cut here. We're gonna just flip it around and get the other part. Just like that. Make sure it's lined up. Keep your hands out of the way. Safety goggles on. <laughs> Perfect cut, we're ready to go install. Okay, so we're gonna slide this one into place and looks like it's gonna fit perfectly. And remember to keep all of your spare pieces, your scraps that you cut off, you may be able to use them at another spot during your project. Just about. Okay, perfect lineup, everything else is in place. Put this right back where it's gonna be. Remembering to keep our uh, fourth and an inch a screw to hold it in place, just a temporary screw that you put in every so often that you're able to just remove um, just to hold that space. Or you can even use the tile spacers or um, I can link down below some spacers that are specially made for this laminate flooring installation. Okay, we're almost ready to start our second row. So I'm going to be starting this row with that scrap piece that I had just cut off. Um, it was the left side of the plank, the far left side. So it will fit here and then I'll be able to attach another one which will enable my seams to not be lined up. So you gotta snap this one into place and then we're gonna add a new one on. So when you do this part, I just tucked it right under and slide it down into place. Perfect seam. And then I have my next piece that I am going to Hold at an angle to get it to slide together. Okay. And then it just slides right into place. And then I am going to use my piece of wood with my mallet, haha, and just slightly. Okay, so I am on my third row. It's starting to come together and I'm really starting to get the hang of it. Um, I have a strange tip that I'm going to share with you. <laughs> so as I was going along, I was finding it difficult to hold up this uh, first piece at a certain angle while trying to slide this piece in and doing the jiggle with both hands. So I figured out <laughs> that if you just lift it, if you just lift this before piece just enough to get your toe under there. <laughs> and maybe this isn't the safest thing, so don't take my word for it. Don't hurt yourself. Um, so maybe you want to find something else that's about as big as a toe to be able to wedge under there. Um, and then that holds it at the right angle. I have two hands free to slowly slide and or wiggle this into place. Okay. So then once I get it like this, do you see how it's up ever so slightly? Um, it's because it's not completely snapped into place up here on this line. Um, and maybe there's a different way to do this, but what I've been doing is just using my piece of wood and my, remember this is a mallet, not a hammer, and just really gently tapping it until this lays flat. That's what shows that this is in place. Just move along. See the seam even going together as I do this. And once it's perfectly in place, it will lay down flatter. There you go. This took me.
me about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes to get to this point. Um, and that's with the beginning part where I was figuring out a whole bunch of different things. So uh, the rest should go pretty smoothly. So we have gotten down to the very last row, right up against the uh, baseboard. So what you can do is you can either remove your baseboard or if you have already removed your baseboard, you're going to be further along than me. Um, that should be enough to get your last piece in. In um, my kit that I showed you earlier with the pry bars, there was this one and I thought that's a weird thing. What on earth is that for? But <laughs> what worked for me is I placed it here and very gently tapped on this side um, and it actually pushed them right so into place. Her room is all finished. It looks amazing in here. Love having this new floor all finished. Rosie loves it. Do you love the new floor, Rosie? You do? It looks so great. <laughs> the floor looks so much better in here. I love this so much more than carpet and I cannot wait to do every other room. Thank you.